Welcome to AH University, brought to you by Aggressive Hydraulics. Tony Kasasa, the Engineering Manager at Aggressive Hydraulics, leads this five-part series that will include the following topics, bearing and bushing basics, key characteristics, stress, types, and implementation. This is the fourth installment in the series explaining various types of bearings and bushings. So we got all sorts of different types of bearings and bushings. We've used a wide variety here at Aggressive Hydraulics, uh, running down the list here quickly, and then we'll talk about each one in more detail. We have solid alloy steel, spring tension alloy steel, bronze, which could be 660 or 954 bronze, composite material, which would be a non-metallic, uh, metal polymer, which would be a combination of metal and not metal, and spherical plane bearings. So solid alloy steel bushings. So solid because it's solid, it's one chunk, it's like a tube. Uh, the advantages is it has a high hardness and it's very durable. In terms of availability, uh, some sizes are available from stock, but something like this also lends itself very well to custom manufacture where we don't either make it here or we have a machine shop make it for us, but uh, basically, any diameter, any length, any internal features uh, could easily be machined. Uh, disadvantages uh, compared to some others is that lower lubricity, so therefore requires grease. And see down in the picture there, we have typical material hardened 4140. So again, in terms of ease of making custom parts, you can buy a bar stock of 4140 and machine almost anything you want. So next one is spring tension alloy bushings. So instead of being solid, being just like a tube, the spring, we see we have these teeth cut in it. And so this was an outward pressing spring. So it wants to spring outward. So we're going to push it into a hole and that spring is going to hold it in place. Uh, advantages, again, it's uh, alloy steel that's been hardened. So we have very high hardness, very good durability. Advantages of this over the previous is it takes less force to push it into the hole because of that spring, it has a little more give, whereas the solid one is just completely a, a press fit. Uh, the gap between the fingers gives a path for grease. So if we had two of these in a hole and a gap between, grease would migrate along the line between those teeth. And the other advantage is that there's standard sizes available. So there's things that are sitting in stock uh, that can be purchased right off the shelf at a pretty cost-effective price. Disadvantage, again, uh, like the solid steel alloy bushing, we've got lower lubricity and requires grease. Another disadvantage is that there's really only two major manufacturers of these. Kind of a more specialized manufacturing process. Uh, we couldn't make these from scratch ourselves. We couldn't send it out to one of our machining partners and have them make it themselves. So those suppliers do have some standards, but if you're wanting something that doesn't fit that standard, it makes it a little bit trickier to get. Uh, it is possible to rework them if you just want to change the length. You could buy one that's longer, and we or a machine shop could adjust the length. But as far as making from the scratch, uh, that'd be up to those two suppliers. Uh, the other, we get a free grease groove, but it's not a great grease groove because it goes all the way to the end. So if you have a middle and you have grease coming in, it can migrate across that gap between the teeth, but it can migrate right on out of the bushing and spill grease. So it's a good grease groove, but it's not a great grease groove. Uh, typical material for these is 6150. So moving past steel and on to bronze, and we'll start with the 660 bronze. So advantages, uh, especially as compared to the hardened steel, is we get better lubricity. Uh, they are wear resistant. And then another advantage over the steel is they resist corrosion. Whereas anything that's made out of steel, subjected to water or salt water, uh, can corrode over time. Whereas bronze is pretty inert and is unlikely to corrode. That would be it. availability. Again, there's some standard sizes available. Reliable bronze is a supplier. And all they do is bronze, and they have a lot of bushings that they make as standards. Other bearing supply houses keep things in stock. Also possible to do custom. You could buy bar or tube of bronze and make it any size or shape we wanted. 
Disadvantage is lower strength. Bronze is not as strong as steel. When we talk about relative hardness or relative strength, uh, if we have a hardened steel bushing, that's probably going to be the pin that wears out first. If we have a bronze bushing and a steel pin or a hardened steel pin, it's probably going to be the bushing that's the wear item and has to be replaced or serviced. That's 660 bronze. We also do 954, which is an aluminum bronze. Uh, also, we get high lubricity, uh, corrosion resistance, but we also get higher strength than the 660 bronze if we use aluminum bronze. Uh, again, there's some standard sizes available, but we can also make custom. Again, 954 bronze is something that can be bought as bar stock and be, be machined. Disadvantage is it's more expensive than the 660 bronze. Composite bushings. So again, this is something that would be non-metallic, some sort of a plasticky-ish type material. Uh, so advantages here, uh, depending on what the material is, but if it's uh, like this example here, which would be a pretty common one, it's a Teflon with a glass fiber wound structure. And Teflon, we know, has very low friction. Uh, so it's self-lubricating. And so one of the big advantages, people like to use these in places where they don't want grease dripping off the machine. So it basically lubricates and no grease needs to be added. No grease should be added. Like bronze, it's corrosion resistant. It's also contamination resistant, maybe more so than the others, because any contaminant material would tend to embed into it and be ingressed and allow the bushing to continue to provide serviceable life. Availability, again, uh, there's some standard sizes available uh, through manufacturers or through bearing supply houses. Uh, disadvantage is typically it has lower strength, definitely, than steel and also slightly lower than bronze. So it's going to be a little bit less durable. And if you wanted some custom size, it's generally going to require some higher quantity. Again, if it's just adjusting the length, we can buy them long, turn them off to, to shorten them. But to get some special diameters would require uh, some quantity. Uh, less common for us, but maybe becoming a little bit more common or popping up is metal polymer bushings. So here's where there's a metal backing on the outside diameter and on the inside, it's some sort of polymer material. The advantages here is you get low coefficient of friction. So the polymers that would be selected would be selected for low friction characteristics. Uh, again, self-lubricating. So kind of nice that they don't have to be greased. Again, tends to be contamination resistant. Also with that metal backing tends to be shock resistant maybe more so than the composite bushing that may be prone to, to break under a shock load. This has the metal backing, which would give it some strength and some flexibility. Disadvantage, uh, it's kind of a new cool thing, so it tends to be a little bit more expensive and limited options for supply. So as we look across those different bearings and we look across the different materials that we talked about, here's a little chart that gives some comparison. Alloy steel is, again, very strong. We're talking about tensile strength up in the mid-90s and yield strength in the 60s, whereas we compare to 660 bronze, it's down to 44,000 tensile, 27,000 PSI yield. Our C954, which was our stronger bronze, is in between, but a little bit closer to the, the steels for the tensile strength up at 85,000, but not great on the yield strength. You know, 32 is not that much higher than the 660. Garmax is on there as an example of composite, and it's in the middle at around 60,000. So those are bushings. We also use some bearings in our cylinder. When we talk about bearings, there's a wide variety of bearings. But the ones that we use are spherical plane bearings or spherical bearings. An advantage of these over the one-piece bushings is it allows for cylinder alignment. We have the ball inside the race that gives some tilt and still provides that bushing function, but allows the cylinder to physically move to self-align. So it's pushing and pulling on the center line. Helps avoid side loads on the rod head gland and the piston of the cylinder. Circle plane bearings tend to be low friction and standards, especially in the smaller sizes, tend to be pretty cost effective. And in terms of availability, there's a wide variety of options that are available. Disadvantages is they get bigger because we have the inner and the outer instead of just one piece. They start to grow. So if we're 
maybe the customers restricted us on the retracted length relative to the stroke. The spherical bearing is going to add more to that dead length. And the other is they get expensive as they get big. So the small ones, half inch, one inch, pretty common, lots of options available. Once you get bigger, say above two inch, they start to get expensive and fewer options available. Typical material, 52-100 bearing steel. Uh, but again, there's lots of options available. And when I say lots of options, there are lots of variables. We got sealed and we have unsealed. So the seal is something that's going to keep grease in and keep contamination out. Uh, the unsealed version doesn't, and the sealed version has a seal that does. Uh, another is greasable, which would be the standard. It's made to have grease added for the lubrication between the ball and the race. But there's also non-greasable versions that are Teflon lined. So instead of grease between the ball and the race, there's actually a Teflon liner. Uh, the ones that are greasable typically have a lubrication hole and a grease groove to distribute that grease. Uh, we talked about materials. So yeah, that one example was an alloy steel. But there's also stainless steel options, and there's also plated options. So it could be an alloy steel uh, that might be more prone to corrosion, but it may be plated with something like a zinc to help uh, delay corrosion. They also come in a standard, and they come in an extended race, which is wider, which distributes that load or that stress over a greater area. High mass alignment. So we talked about how the, the ball can pivot in that race. And the standard has an amount that it's allowed to pivot. High misalignment allows more. There's standard and there's precision. So tighter tolerance. There's inch and there's metric. And there's also rod ends. You can buy the individual spherical bearings or you can buy them as a part of an integral rod end that may be threaded on to a rod. So size range, again, half to two and a half inch is pretty commonly available. When I looked at our numbers in our system for what we pay, the two and a half inch is like 12 times the cost of the half inch. So we're going up five times in size, but 12 times in price. The stainless ones I looked at and the small sizes say less than an inch or an inch or less. Stainless is 10 times the cost of alloy steel. Once you get to one to two inches, you get pretty limited availability in terms of who you can find you can buy them from. And above two inches, it's very limited available supply and much more expensive, even more than that, 10X. This concludes part four. Be sure to check out the remaining videos linked below. Contact us today to start your purpose-built process.